Warriors, Coach Josh here, and we are live from the quarantine zone training on a Thursday morning. And listen, I, uh, I have a story for you this morning, and it, it, it's, a, it's a story about uh, a philosophy or a, a practice that we use in the United States Army. And I don't tell a lot of combat stories because mostly my job wasn't combat in the Army. Uh, but I think that uh, an analogy for, the, for a time where everyone is feeling quite threatened, we're feeling threatened financially, we're feeling threatened physically, we're feeling threatened emotionally because of our health and our family members' health that are at risk right now, possibly. So there's a lot of threat going on, and so a combat analogy actually isn't a bad analogy to use at a time like this. And one of the things that's true when you're in combat is you've got you've got fire coming in and it's scary and it's natural to want to hunker down behind cover, get in your trench, your foxhole and make sure that you're safe. In fact, that's a, that's a good strategy to do uh, in, in most cases, but you can't stay there. You have to, you have to, you have to get your head up. You got to put your head on a swivel and you got to look around. What are you looking for when you're looking around? You're looking for your opportunity to win. Now, when you're hunkered down, and you're, you're in your foxhole, you're behind cover, you're on defense. And that makes sense, There's pragma that, that's pragmatic, but uh, if you stay on defense, you don't get a chance to win. Uh, you're, you're huddling, you're in retreat. Now, if you're watching this video, you might have been in defensive mode, right? You, you changed your commute, you changed your habits, you're in lockdown, you're, you're restricting your access to other people, you're social distancing, that's awesome. You, you got to do those things, right? Right now, especially, that's what, that's what we all need to do. We need to band together and work together on this. But you have to start looking around. You have to start looking around for that opportunity. Because right now, uh, we're, we're entering a, a, a new time, an uncertain time. Through this period of quarantine, you can either come out on the other end scared, less healthy, worse off, less, uh, uh, le less optimistic and adaptive, or you come out fit, you could come out with more uh, options, you could come out with new ideas, you know, new ways to, uh, to work, new ways to use your brain, new ways to sell your product, whatever it is that you're doing, you can come out with resilience, come out on the other side with extra skill sets, be stronger and better off, or you can come back, you can come out of this exhausted, physically beaten down, emotionally beaten down, and a lot more fragile. Now the difference between those two scenarios is how you choose, what you choose to do with your actions, how you choose to behave. And so it's time to go on offense. You've been, you've been practicing defense up to this point. Now what we're, we're looking for is our next opportunity. An opportunity like working at your butt like we're about to do right now. So today we're gonna focus on butts and backs. So we're gonna do a lot of work that uh, is involving the glutes, involving the abs, involving the lower back and the upper back. We, we have to very intentionally train the back when we don't have the gym, we don't have weights, uh, we don't have a lot of uh, barbells and dumbbells and, and stuff to use. So we're gonna have to create some opportunities to use our back and we're gonna do that today. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna do some mobility, Josh? We gonna do some stretches? Let's stretch out. Okay. <laughs> so we're here. My foot's on my couch, and I'm gonna reach up overhead, bend the elbow, grip my elbow with my opposite arm. I'm gonna stretch away from my bent knee. I'm opening up that side body. I'm also stretching that lat. I'm gonna take some big breaths in through the nose, exhaling through the mouth, opening up that hip, in through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. Take five breaths here. Oh man, that feels good. I could do that for a while. I'm going to stand up, switch your feet. Oh, this feels so good. Reaching up, bending that elbow, coming back around. So we're doing this, whew, so our hips are not stuck. I can feel the changes in my body over working from home for a couple of days working behind the desk a lot more than I ever have. And wow, my hips are feeling it. Five breaths here, in through the nose, out through the mouth. 
Whew. Wow, pretty impressive. Love that stretch. Okay, so I've done my quad stretch and lat stretch. Now we're going to do a couple of variations to warm up the glutes and the hips. And there's all kinds of different uh, body types and uh, different setups, but I want you to feel what it feels like when we go through these different um, uh, kinds of glute bridges. So for one, we'll do a standard bridge. Heels are 12 inches apart. My body's flat on the ground. I'm going to push through the center of my foot. I'm going to elevate, squeezing the glutes. Come right back down. I'm going to go ahead and do 10 reps, squeezing the, my butt cheeks together like I'm trying to pinch a walnut, pushing through my entire foot, squeezing the glutes, keeping my rib cage down, tucking my pelvis into the floor on the way up. I'm going to do 10 reps here. And I want you to feel where you feel this in your body, whether you feel it in your abs or your glutes, hamstrings. And then I want you to take your toes and point them inward and do another five reps and just feel how that feels different. Heels are in the same spot, toes are pointing in, squeezing my glutes, pushing up my hips to the ceiling. You're gonna feel this tension slightly differently. You might feel a little knee irritation. You might feel it more in your glutes more in your hamstrings. Then what you're going to do is you're going to put your feet together. So you're going to touch your shoes together. You're going to squeeze your feet and your knees towards each other like you're trying to pinch uh, a shoe in between your knee. And you're going to drive up with your hips. Notice my knees want to come out immediately. So I'm, I'm doing that, feeling where I'm feeling that in my body. Feeling a little bit more in my glutes. Yeah, definitely feels different. And then after five reps, I'm going to take my feet, point, get them really wide, put my toes out. And then I'm going to drive up with my hips. Woo. What do you feel that, Bootsy? Oh, right, right here in the back of my hamstring. So oh. Bootsy feels that more in the hamstring, whereas I feel that more in my knee. So. It's okay that we all feel it in different places. Our bodies are made up slightly differently. So we've, got, we've done toes out or toes in, toes out, super wide. Um, we've done feet together. And now we're gonna do single leg. But I want you to do five reps with your left foot very close to your hip and see how that feels. Two, three, four. Squeezing the glute on the way up. And then you're going to stay on that left foot, but you're going to move that foot further away from you. You're going to move it a foot and a half, two feet out from your hip, and then see what happens. Ooh, that's harder for me. My hamstring wants to cramp. That's a little bit interesting. Oh. So the distance that you keep that knee joint open, the amount of uh, the degree that you keep that knee joint open, it changes the way that you recruit. I want you to feel that on each side. The significance of all of these movements is simply that each of our bodies behaves a different way under different stress. So you're trying it out. Five reps. Then I'm going to put my foot further out like I did the other side and see how it changes the recruitment of that hamstring. What do you notice, Bootsy? I notice this much more my quad of the down leg. Quad of the down leg. So she's feeling that in the hip flexor, whereas I feel that more in the hamstring. Interesting. The more you know, but there's no right way to do a glute bridge. The best way, the way that makes you feel the best is probably the most important uh, thing that you figure out as you go through all these variations. So keep experimenting so you can modify for yourself when you're doing these different programs with, uh, with your coaches online. All right. So we've done a bunch of bridges. Now we're going to do a glute stretch from a chair. And Bootsy's going to demonstrate this. So she's got a couch set up. She's going to take an ankle, put it over the knee. She's going to drop down, stretching the chest and shoulder. At the same time, she's stretching her hip on the other side. So she's going to bob in and out. Inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. Then she's going to switch feet. About five breaths is the goal. 
So she's going through that. She's got good mobility on her shoulders, but only go as far as it feels good for you um, because you're trying to stretch your hip, not so much uh, the, the shoulders um, aren't, aren't the specific target of this, but you do get a lot of pec stretch as well. Nice work, Bootsy. And then the last thing I want everybody to do before we really get started is I want you to do some mobility with your ankle. So I've got my foot planted. I'm gonna press my knee forward, but I'm gonna keep my, my heel pressed into the floor. So I'm doing that so that I'm stretching the soleus. The soleus is one of two muscles of the calf that crosses, the uh, soleus crosses the knee joint. When the knee is bent, it stabilizes the knee and the ankle. So we wanna stretch it. Right now, since you're probably not doing a lot of deep squats in your life, or you might not be as active as you usually are, now is a great time to work on that soleus mobility and pump that, that knee as far forward as you can. I'm a little tight in the ankles, I can feel it. So I wanna see about three, the knee to be able to come three or four inches past the toe. Um, I always struggle with that. So it's really important for me to do this. So you're gonna do about 10 reps on each side and see how that feels. Excellent work, five. I'm counting out, but I'm really trying to keep that foot down as I reach forward with that knee. I can feel it popping in my ankle. This feels really good. 10 reps here. All right, that's gonna be plenty of stretching and mobility for today. Now we're gonna get started on our actual workout. So we're gonna be focusing on the back. For so the back, abs, glutes and uh, legs. These are things that we um, uh, have to target very specifically, like I was saying earlier. So we're gonna begin with a plank row. So right now, we're gonna go through the exercises that we're gonna do, and then um, we'll do our density circuit, and I'll show you, or I'll talk about the timing for that. But right now, we're gonna do the rows, uh, the plank row, and we're gonna be set up, our feet apart, hands under the shoulder, and I'm gonna pull one hand in, the other hand in, just like I'm rowing with a dumbbell. So I'm gonna to continue to row, continue to pull, and my hips are gonna be at the same height as my shoulders, roughly. Legs are gonna be locked, quads are gonna be locked. I'm gonna do five per side to warm up, because that's what we're gonna do in the density circuit. We're gonna do five reps per side, and I can notice I already wanna compensate, so I'm gonna to have to pay a lot of attention to my hips rotating when we go through. Then. We're gonna do a lateral lunge walk around with T-spine rotation. So this is a, a mobility drill, and this is working on our upper back at the same time as it works on our legs. So I'm gonna be down, I'm gonna walk all the way around, I'm gonna come to the inside of my opposite leg, reach to the sky, following the head with the eye. We should jump in every time as, the, as like the resuming the back from commercial break. So I'm reaching overhead, bringing my forearm in line with my ankle. I'm gonna go five reps on each side. That's my warm up, And then that's what we'll do while we're training. As I'm rolling out, my, my back leg wants to be straight. My uh, lead leg is gonna be bent. And my hips are gonna be wherever they must be so that I can maintain that alignment with my forearm and my shin. So I'll do that for five reps per side. And then I'm gonna do my prisoner Bulgarian split squat. What is that? It's pretty dark sounding, it's pretty cool. I'm gonna put my foot on my couch or chair, whatever I've got. And then I'm gonna get in the prisoner position and I'm gonna almost touch my knee to the ground, but not quite. I'm gonna get a stretch in, point my elbows back. So I'm really working on the upper back while I train. That's four, and then five, and then I'm gonna switch. One, ooh, this side's much tighter. Two, three, four, five. Five first side, ooh, nice and taxing. Then we're gonna do a dead bug with pullover. So, 
We have light dumbbells. If you have no dumbbells, you can use a book at home or you can just use your hands because the thing that makes this exercise really powerful, here, I'll go ahead and demonstrate on Bootsy. Her low back's flat to the ground, feet and knees are to be together, and she's keeping her elbows locked as she reaches overhead, rib cage stays down. So the whole time, keeping that neutral spine, and she's breathing consistently. She's inhaling as she reaches overhead. She's exhaling as she comes back to neutral. She's gonna do that 10 times, and then her, uh, her, she's gonna move on to the next exercise. All the way overhead, coming back, all the way overhead, coming back, all the way overhead, coming back, all the way overhead, coming back. And the final exercise of the circuit is gonna be the push-up. So we'll do 10 push-ups. Again, feet and knees together, hands underneath the shoulders, pulling yourself down to the floor, exploding up. I'm gonna continue to do the reps. 10 push-ups is actually kind of a lot, especially when you're doing them in a circuit. Make sure the quality is good. Squeezing those glutes, squeezing those knees. Everything's tight. Going through, I'm gonna do 10 reps, and then I'm gonna move on. So, how this density set works is you're gonna do five plank rows on each side, five lateral lunges with, with T-spine rotation on each side, five Bulgarian split squats on each side, 10 dead bugs, dead, or dead bug pullovers, and 10 push-ups. So basically, it's 10 reps of everything as you look at on a, on, a, on a board. It's 10 reps of everything. You're gonna see how many rounds you can complete in that first seven minutes. So we're gonna do seven minutes of everything. We'll take a two minute rest break, and then we're gonna try and increase the density, meaning we'll have seven minutes, and we're trying to get more reps in that short period of time. That's gonna be quite taxing, it's gonna be quite intense. But the point is, is to challenge yourself to produce more metabolically, physiologically, uh, pushing yourself pretty hard. There's a lot of hormonal benefits to that. Get, in that, get into that later. So give that a shot. So make sure you got your timer set for seven minutes. I'm gonna be counting down ours, and we'll get started here in a couple of seconds. Four. All right, we're getting started in three, two, one, go. So I'm feet are wide, squeezing my glutes, two, three, pulling that thumb into the rib cage, four, and five. Lateral lunge, wolf walk around. So I'm here, feet are double wide, coming out, walking all the way around. Reaching up, that was one, coming back. Coming up again, that's two. Walking around, working my abs, making sure that hand comes in line with the heel. All the way out, all the way in, three. Almost done here. This is four. Well, this takes a long time and it's hard. I didn't notice that until just now. Almost home with this round. That's five. Prisoner Bulgarian split squat. Oh yeah. So, foot on the bench. Elbows back. One, two, three, four, five. Switching sides. One. Two, elbows back, chest up. Three, four, and five. Woo. Dead bug pullover. Coming onto the ground. Reaching overhead, elbows straight. Two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, keep those elbows locked, rib cage down, finishing strong, that's 10. Push-ups, 10 reps, feet together, knees together. Pulling those pickle jars open on my way down. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Back to the plank row. So I'm here. Feet together, knees together. Oh, just kidding. Feet together or feet apart. Thumb in the rib cage. That's one. Locking out both those legs. That's two. Squeezing the glutes. That's three. Push through the pinkies. That's four. Five. Feeling really good now. Lateral lunges walk around. I'm already on my second round and I'm feeling it. We got four minutes left. See if we can get it done. That's one. Back all the way in. Reaching up. All the way out. That's two. Out. Come in. Keep working. Coming through. Three. This is good for our back, good for our legs, groin, abs. Four. Walking around. Coming all the way back into it. Finishing up strong. Coming into rep five. Prisoner Bulgarian split squat from the top. One. Two. Chest up, elbows back. Three. Four. Keep those, that foot flat on the lead side. That's five. Coming back. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Dead bug with pullover. Back to the ground. <laughs> living room. Hashtag living room problems. Two. Rib cage down. Three. Back flat. Four. Stay strong. Five. If you want to make it harder, you can push your feet further out. Seven. Keep those that rib cage down though. Eight. Nine. Ten. Back to the push-up. Feet apart. Oh, sorry, feet together. Hands apart. Pour myself into the floor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, it's two rounds in. We got two minutes left. I think we're going to get three rounds out of this. Plank row, feet wide. Pulling thumb into the rib cage. One, two, feet wide. Squeezing the glutes. Three, four, and five. Lateral lunges walk around. So, back to my favorite stretch. Coming through here. All the way out, all the way in, reaching out. If you're going faster than me, good job. If you're going slower than me, that's okay. Take a rest if you need to. We're gonna get some water here in about 80 seconds. No big deal. I'm only on round three of the lateral lunge walk around. It's okay, it's not a competition, it's a cooperation. We're figuring out what we can do. We're testing ourselves. This is just a check-in. Seeing, we, seeing what we're made of, seeing what we're good at, seeing what our strength is today. That was five, all the way back up. Prisoner squat, a prisoner Bulgarian split squat. Lead foot has all the load. Coming down, stretching that hip. Two, three, four, five. Switching feet. Chest up. One, almost lost it there. Two, three, four, five. Dead bugs. 20 seconds remaining. We're gonna get it done. Okay, keep those arms extended. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's the buzzer. So, we got 2.7 rounds done. I'm gonna get some water. Actually, I'm gonna get some intro with my 
BCAAs and creatine in there. Really excited to hydrate. You're gonna have about two minutes of rest and you need that rest to get stronger. So in order for me to beat what I just did, I need to get at least three rounds in this next time. And I think I'm getting kind of warmed up, so I'm probably gonna be able to do that. What do you think, Bootsy? Um, I think it's gonna be interesting to see if I can get more than I just did. Um, very interesting. If you're following along at home, remember, you go at your own pace, but make sure that you get those rest periods in. We put aside two minutes of rest. You can rest longer. Uh, if you're at home, you can pause the VHS tape. And so you can take a break when you need and resume the training. Now the seven minutes, two minutes rest, seven minutes, that's a very intense uh, escalating density protocol. If you're new to body weight strength training, like I am right now, uh, i.e. if you haven't been doing it a lot, uh, then make sure you take your time, you get that rest period in. So we're gonna get started here. We're gonna get started in three, two, one. Feet wide, pull it into our plank row. That's one. Coming through. Two. Second round, second wind. Getting strong, that's three. Feet are locked, abs are locked. Four. Staying powerful, that's five. Back to the uh, lateral lunge walk around. So I'm stepping out, dropping down into it. All the way around, lifting up. Yeah, yeah. Getting back. That's two. Staying strong. Feeling good. That's three. Almost home. Now my heart rate's still up. That's okay. Four. If your heart rate's up, you're doing the right thing. We're getting our conditioning and our strength training in all at the same time. And that's five. So good. Bulgarian split squats. <laughs> Chest up, hit elbows back. That's two, three, four, five. Switching it up. One, two, three, four, and five. Now we're going into the dead bug. Here, reaching overhead, keeping those elbows locked. Three, four, five. Keep that spine flat. Six. Rib cage down. Seven. Eight. Nine. So good. Ten. Push-ups. It's a good thing I'm not tired. Back down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whew. Back to the beginning. Plank row. Feet apart. One, two. Keeping those legs locked. Three, hips at the same height as the shoulder. Four, push it through my pinky on the ground. Five, all right, lateral lunge walk around. So we're here, all the way out. Coming out, coming all the way, that's one. Woo -hoo. Feeling good. Two. I'm feeling this in my lats, chest, shoulders, triceps. Coming up on set four here. Four. Yeah. It's becoming one of my favorite exercises. That was five. Prisoner Bulgarian. Chest up, elbows back. One, two, three. Make sure that lead foot stays flat. Four, pushing through, five. Other side. One, 
two, three, four, five. Dead bugs. Sitting down. One, two, feet are flat. Sorry, low back is flat. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. The push up. All right, feet and knees together. Pull yourself into the floor. Make sure you're modifying if you need to. Only do the good reps. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, I got enough time for one more round. I know I can make it happen. Going into the plank row. One, two, three, four, five. Lateral lunge walk around. That was one. Two. Coming on, coming on home. Three. Hopefully you got some music and you're not just listening to me. Huff and puff. Four. Five. Prisoner Bulgarians. One, two, three, four, five. Switching feet. One, two, three, four, five. Pullovers. Making it look good. Coming through. Rib cage down. Back flat. Elbows straight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> wow. Push ups. 10 reps. Feet together, knees together. Make it strong. Make sure you're breathing. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. Ten seconds left. Finish up your final reps. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, Warriors. That's the game. It's time for homework. So got all that extra energy left, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use it to go through our, uh, our homework progressions. I'll, I'll, I'll talk you through Coach's Bootsy's training. So we're gonna do the uh, chin-ups or the swimmers, push-ups, sit-outs, knee grabs. All right, starting with the push-up. All right, perfect push-up, feet and knees together, dropping down to the floor, Exploding back up. Good. Rest. That's just a demo. So uh, the uh, upper arm is, the, is what you want to break the plane of with the shoulder. Now she's going to be doing a sit out. So she's going to, uh, when she's, she's in all fours, hands are close to the feet. She's pivoting to the outside foot. Yep, kicking through. All the weight goes into the outside foot that allows the hip to be free so she can move through that motion. She's kicking through, coming back. Knee grab, so she's on her back. Chest, uh, fist on the chest, throwing the arms to the feet, grabbing the shins, coming back down. Every time her shoulder blades hit the ground, that's one. And then the last but definitely not least, the swimmer, which we're using to train the upper back in lieu of a chin up, in case you don't have a chin up bar at home. She's gonna go ahead and pull the water to her chest, keeping the elbows in tight, letting the shoulder blades move freely um, as she goes throughout this Set. All right. We're starting in three, two. 
And she's pushing, she's pushing. Now we only have 20 seconds. It doesn't matter how many reps you get. What matters is how, what the quality of your training is. So she's got 10 seconds left. She's got her feet together, knees together. Core, her body's moving as one unit. She's gonna continue to push through five, four, three, two, one. Now she's gonna go here to the sit out. So she's already on all fours, getting ready to rock. She's starting in three, two, one, move. Now she's kicking through, pivoting to the outside foot. The hand's gonna come into her chest. So she's not flailing around. She's keeping that hand in tight, making sure it looks sharp. So you wanna look just like Bootsy's looking right now. She's gonna keep kicking for another five, four, three, two, one. Now she's back on her, on her back. She's gonna get ready for the sit out, or sorry, the knee grab. The knee grab is uh, a full body ab drill and she's starting it in three, two, go. One, two, awesome. She's off to the races. I'll let her count for herself so I don't mess her up so she can stay on track. She's gonna continue to race through this as fast as she can. If you're not doing as many reps, that's perfectly fine so long as you look good doing it. That's all I care about. We're gonna go in three, two, one, and transition to the swimmer. It's the final exercise of the series. So she's gonna be reaching out above her head, pulling her hands in, starting in three, two, one, go. So she's moving. All right, Bootsy's crushing out the swimmer. She's getting after it. Eyes are looking about 12 inches in front of her head. Feet, shoelaces are pushed into the ground. She's continuing to row, continuing to move that body, pulling that, pulling that water to her chest. She's done in two, one, done. Holy Toledo, what a race. So that is a pretty dang effective workout for a Thursday morning. We've done escalating density. We've done uh, our, our homework, which is our Tabata practice for those four, four endurance exercises. Hopefully you got something from that because that's the goal is to get from the training not just to get through the training. And the same thing that applies to the situation that we're in. It's not, about, it's not about surviving. You do want to survive, but you want to thrive. You want to decide to be in a better position at the end of the quarantine than you were at the beginning. And that's up to you. You can come out of this stronger, you can come out of this faster, you can come out of this physically and mentally resilient if you look for your opportunity and get ready to play offense. Look around, be present, be aware, and go on offense. Coach Josh, training for Warriors Portland, helping you bring out the warrior within. I don't know what you are asking, which is why it sounds impossible. All right, we're going.